Do you struggle to get the measurements that you want? I do, and it makes me mad. So I came up with a way to try to help figure things out. Okay, so here you can see the Nano VNA, and it is fully calibrated to sweep from 6.5 megahertz all the way to 30 megahertz. And it's calibrated to the end of these connection adapters. And you can see with an open load, we are over here and we are right on the line of resonance. Now, when I take the low rent probes that I built and I connect these, something's going to happen. And then you can see here my marker has moved down below the point of resonance. So I go into my menu, I go to display, I go to scale, and then in scale, I go to E-Delay. And I've already done this, so I know it's 400 picoseconds. And then you can see that it has moved back to its original spot. Now, when we take a look at that, what that does is it moves our reference plane from the end of the connector to the end of the alligator probes. It does not account for any characteristic impedance of the probe itself. So I did a video complaining about how I was frustrated with this LC meter, which really isn't that bad, and it works pretty well. When you get down into lower value components, it starts to struggle a little bit. And I'm talking very low value components, typically stuff that we would use in UHF and VHF frequencies, building filters and things like that. So I've got a little bit better tester, and I got this East tester here, the ET4301. Uh, and I'll have a link to this below where you can check it out. And this is nice in and of itself but I can still only test components at lower frequencies, which is fine when determining a component's value. Um, but if you wanna see how it behaves at certain frequencies that are higher, you need to use the Nano VNA. So what I wanted to do is I wanna just take this capacitor right here, and this is just a ceramic capacitor, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hook this up to the probes that come with the East Tester. Now this is not a review on the East Tester, Maybe you'll see one. It comes with these alligator probes and it comes with a bunch of other parts, but uh, we're not looking at those right now. Let me zoom in a little bit. So right now it's testing at one kilohertz. You're not gonna be able to see that, but the function is resistance and we don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change that to capacitance. And what you can see is our capacitor is reading somewhere around 99.7 picofarads. Now, if I go ahead and I adjust my frequency to 10 kilohertz, it will change a little bit. And then when I go to 100 hertz, which is a little lower, it changes again. So it's right around 100 picofarads. It's bouncing around between 100 and 101. All right, let's get this connected to our Nano VNA. Okay, so now I have my capacitor hooked up to my probe. Now the black is to our shield and the red is to our center conductor, but that doesn't really matter. I just want to let people know. And then now I can see my values across to the sweep and how as I change frequency, and that right now we're going from 6.9 to 30 megahertz. That's the areas of interest where I like to operate amateur radio. I can actually see the value of this component and how it behaves. But it's a little hard to see here, so let's go to Nano VNA Saver. Okay, now we're looking at Nano VNA Saver, and just a couple of things I want to note. This is the sweep that we ran. I have it set for 10 segments. So what it does is it gives me 1,010 data points. And what I can do is I can actually move my marker along my frequency span here. When I do this, you can see the values up in the marker table under marker number one change. And so let's just say I want to take a look at, I don't know, 14 megahertz, somewhere around the FT8 band. And I'm actually going to cheat and I want to come over here. And it gets me close to it. And when I look at the data table, what I can see is that the series capacitance of this is 115 picofarads. And that's right about what I want. And so I'm, pr I'm pretty happy with that. And it looks like I can get a pretty accurate measurement. Okay, what I've done here is I've connected an inductor up to the East tester. And we are in here. And right now you can see that it's measuring resistance, which is what I don't want. So let me go ahead and change this to inductance. And what it's saying is, is that we have around 1.5 to 1.6 microhenries. I'm not going to mess with all the other settings on here. Let's go ahead and connect this up to the Nano VNA. All right, the sweep's done. And looking at our Smith chart here, you can see that we are now on the inductance side of the Smith chart, on the north side. And let's go back over here.
and we set our marker for our frequency of interest in the 20 meter band. And then when I come over here, what we can see under series inductance is 1.1174. Let's see what happens if we go all the way down here at 30 megahertz, it's 1.3. And then if we go all the way up here to 6.5 megahertz, we are at 1.085. So it looks like that uh, changes with frequency. All right, so now you can see that we have a resistor hooked up to our east tester and this resistor is reading 99.77 ohms which is what we expect because it's a 100 ohm resistor let's connect it to the nano vna all right we're back at the nano vna let's go ahead and run a sweep now what we would expect to see here is that uh this would be around a two to one swr so if you look in our data table up here you see 1.975 now our marker is at seven megahertz. And so what this does become is inductive as we increase in frequency, which is what you would expect from a decent capacitor, not a good one. It's not a bad one, but it's, 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 not, a, it's not a good one. And then when we go all the way up here, we are reading our series, um, we are reading our resistance at 105.7 ohms all the way down here at the low end, we're reading at 9.8. So it's still pretty close, but what I'm happy about here is, is that I have a way that I can use the ease tester to look at my capacitor, resistor, and inductor values at a lower frequency and kind of estimate what I'm looking for for a project or for a build. And then I can hook them up to the nano VNA and get an estimation of how they are going to behave at frequency. Anyhow, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching.